So this is the moment of a force for vector formulation. So if we had a force F and a point O that we wanted to find the moment about, we would have our distance from O to F of R. And then you would get your moment perpendicular to the plane of R and F. Such that this is where you use your cross product. The moment is R cross F. And the magnitude of that moment is R F sine theta, where this is theta. And so this magnitude can be shown that it's the same thing as um, the scalar formation. Because so from O to F, a perpendicular line from O to F would be D, right? And D is R sine theta. So this is the same thing as the same thing as the scalar formation. But when you're looking at three dimensions, you want to use the cross product of R cross F. So let's say you had a force F and a point O. And you had you can have any moment arm. They're all going to give you the same moment for F. So that's MO is equal to R1 cross F, which is the same thing as R2 cross F and R3 cross F. And then just like we did with a cross product, MO can then be found using the IJK table. And then if you had multiple forces, you could find the resultant moment about point O as just the sum of all of your R cross F, which leads us into the principles, the principles of moments. The moment of a force about a point is equal to the sum of the moments of the components of the force about the point. Okay, so if we had a force F1, F2, such that the sum of those two forces F. We're trying to find the moment about point O. This would be our R vector. Okay. So F is equal to F1 plus F2. 
so that the moment is R cross F, but F is really R cross F1 plus F2. And from our distributive law, this is the same thing as R cross F1 plus R cross F2. So this is the theorem, the principle of moments that I was using when I would take a force, like an example of 4, 7. When I took a force and I put it into its x and y components and then added the moments together, this is the principle that I was using to allow that.